Uh, the meeting of the Ascension Parish Zoning Commission for January 9th, 2013 will now come to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, please note for the record that all of the commissioners are present. Uh, and the only staff member that hasn't yet introduced herself is you, so. <laughs> Patrice Johnson. Okay, thank you. Uh, Item number five, uh, the minutes of the December 12th meeting. Uh, the, the minutes that were sent to us, there was a cut and paste error in that. I don't know if you noticed it. Uh, one of the, the things that we approved was put in there twice, and it uh, has been adjusted. So if you look at the new minutes, maybe take a second and look at the, the minutes that were just passed out. Uh, it, it, the, the error really came out under item 10, the staff report. Uh, the commission action that was taken was copied from the prior commission action on, on the minutes. But this, uh, as I see it now, looks like a, a, uh, uh, the correction was made. So I would entertain uh, a motion that we accept the <coughs> corrected minutes. Motion to accept. Mr. Mr. Nizo moves. Second. Second by Mr. Callender. Any objection? The uh, corrected minutes stand approved. Uh, item number six, public comment period. <coughs> Did anyone sign up for public comments? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, number seven, uh, Chairman's comments. I have no additional comments. Item number eight, a public hearing to amend the Ascension Parish Development Code zoning tables for recommendation for approval or denial to the Ascension Parish Council. And this is uh, uh, 1212, reduce residential density <coughs> along across parish commercial zoning designation. And this is the item that we had some discussion in, uh, in our last meeting. Yes, sir. So just to refresh your memory, this came as a uh, request from the Strategic Planning commit Committee of the Council that they wanted the commission to make a recommendation of whether or not they wanted to explore the idea of reducing the residential density in the commercial zoning categories. Okay. And the proposals re reduce the single family density to, f to uh, four units per acre in mixed use one in, in CC Crossroads Commercial. Yes, sir. And reduce the duplex zero lot line to five, uh, reduce the multifamily <coughs> residential to eight. And that's reduced from what figures? What? The duplex and zero lot line was or is currently 10 units per acre and the multifamily residential is currently 20 units per acre. So that's a significant uh, reduction? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> Questions? Comments? I have a question of our legal counsel. I just want to know if Ms. Manda thinks that this ordinance would stand up to an examination legally. Will, 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 it, will it be able to be upheld in a court of law? Similar ordinances have been struck down as unconstitutional because they limit the, n the type of housing that you allow in your community and in your parish. So um, without going into too much detail, it is possible that it could be struck down by the courts. And have similar <laughs> ordinances been struck down Yes. In surrounding in, in St. Bernard, in St. Bernard, for example, uh, two years ago, there was a similar ordinance that uh, drastically decreased the density um, and did not allow for certain types of housing, con condominiums, apartments, and uh, it was found by a federal court to be unconstitutional. What would be the, I guess, the bright line there? I mean, at, at would any reduction be unconstitutional or it have to be significant? How, how would we determine how much reduction is okay? You have to look across the board at all of your zoning and what is allowed, and you have to have, and I'm not using a legal term here, but a substantial chunk that would, uh, would allow for all incomes um, to, to be able to live in your parish. Mm -hmm. And if you only, if, if the change to your code makes it economically or financially impossible to build apartment type housing or condominium type housing, then it very likely will violate the law. You just have to look across the board where you have availability for that type of housing. Mm -hmm. 
and that would just take an examination of the code. It might be something, I don't know if Ricky can speak to, is there any, would there be any left? If, the, if, this, if this change were adopted or recommended to the council, <coughs> would there be an opportunity for any property owner in this zoning designation to be able to develop? Uh, well, I mean, you're talking about mixed use, which is all of Airline Highway, and Crossroads Commercial, which is along 44 and 42 and 73 and, you know, some key locations. If you reduce the ability for multifamily to be in those locations, no, there is no place else for multifamily to be developed. So basically, if this ordinance would become <coughs> law here, then <coughs> there could be no new apartment complexes built. No, there could be apartment complexes built. Not economically viable ones. Correct. So the, apart the complex mansions on Ivy Lake uh, on airline under this scenario they can never have been built no sir mr. chairman I, I, I do not see a driving reason to go forward with this I, I think it's very restrictive I, I just don't see a reason to go forward with it you guys who <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, the fact is we've got infrastructure problems whether whether we approve this or not. And those are that's a separate issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah, would this, would this exacerbate the problem? Maybe over time. But the fact is if we don't address our, our wastewater and transportation infrastructure problems, we've got bigger problems than this would create. Um, I, I'm opposed to to reducing this uh, this density. I think it limits the possibilities for development. Uh, for affordable housing too too much uh, especially considering the the potential growth we have in Ascension Parish we've got to accommodate uh, so I'm opposed I agree with Mr. Jafisi okay. just um, something to think about mm -hmm. if you were interested in actually decreasing the density but keeping it, keeping the ability to develop multifamily housing, there is a footnote that limits the number of units in an apartment complex to 48. So just as an example, if you reduce the density to 15 units per acre, but increase the number of units that you could build to 150 or some higher number, you sort of are taking robbing from Peter and paying Paul sort of thing, you're basically saying you can't have as many units per acre, but you can have more units if you have more acreage, if you get my gist. Because right now they have to go to... limited now, Ricky? It's limited to 48 units. They have to go to the Board of Adjustments for a variance, which is what's happening later this month. If you can even find the acreage. I mean, uh, there, there is a counter to if you want to reduce the density, I would say increase the number of units, and you're going to sort of say you can't have as many units per acre, but you can have more units on the acreage you do have. So, I mean, th I just wanted to give you an option because <clears throat> simply saying no to this may not be the answer. There may be another yeah. because I, I will tell you 15 units per acre is a standard multifamily density. 48 units in an apartment complex is not standard. That is completely not mm. In most cases, it's not staying at 48. It's, it's, no, no. it's being asked to, they're asking for the Board of Adjustments to make adjustments to it, and it's going above 48. And you know, Mr. Brock has been here a considerable time more than me, but in his recollection, they've never been denied when they've asked for that variance either. Correct. I mean, they're making them jump through another hoop that may not be necessary. Why? Yeah. Do you think that the Strategic Planning Committee would feel like they would want to, I mean, have their, is their rationale for this been expressed adequately? Would they need to express that to us? Or I think they're looking for a recommendation to come back to the council so the council can decide if they want to act. If this, if this body was going to continue moving forward in a negative direction, it would die tonight. We would not push a negative recommendation to the council. Right. 
Well, I would, uh, <clears throat> I would be kind of interested to hear what the strategic plan has to, the planning committee has to say about that possibility of increasing the number of units since it seems like they're going to the Board of Adjustments and getting the variation, the, the, the variance to go over the 48 anyway. If, if Obviously, we have to do something, but we can't do it. I don't believe we can do it under this particular method. Uh, and, and if that's a possibility of, of uh, maybe accomplishing the same thing, but from a different <coughs> angle and not presenting the problems that following this particular request would, we may need to explore that just a little bit before we make a hardcore decision on just dying here with this, this request. I'd like to see this go back to the strategic planning and see what their feeling is on it before we make a, a full decision here. Okay, so are we okay with reducing the single family density in the commercial categories? And the reason I say that is um, currently the only place to do 50-foot wide lots in this parish is in your commercial designation. Now, the odds of ever getting to eight units an acre on a 50-foot wide lot is never going to happen. Um, the most I think you could ever get to is about five. And so if this body wants to send a series of recommendations back to strategic planning, I wouldn't simply drop it from eight to four. I would probably drop it from eight to five. And then duplexes and zero lot lines is another animal altogether. If this body is interested in continuing to have zero lot lines um, or duplexes in this parish, I wouldn't drop that from 10 to five either. I'd probably drop that from 10 to eight because once again, if you're gonna do a duplex or a zero lot line product, you're not going to get to 10 units an acre anyway, but you probably could get to six, seven, eight with a, with a, a product. So I just want to make sure that what you guys send back to strategic planning does represent what you would ultimately want to recommend back to the council. Mr. Chair, I, I would like a case from strategic planning on each of these items separately as opposed to a package. We if we had the right case, perhaps we could come to a decision on uh, single family, et cetera. But the way it s sits now, I, I don't have enough to, to go one way or the other. Okay. And I, I would like to hear from the proponents, I mean, directly, the, the people who are, I mean. The people who are pushing for it to be lowered so yes. much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let them make their case. I mean, and there may be some, some things we're not hearing that, that would uh, change our, mm -hmm. uh, our consideration. Okay. So uh, I'll entertain a motion then that we put this uh, item or this consideration uh, back on the agenda next month, uh, broken down, as uh, Mr. Burgess suggested, uh, with, with uh, each individual case. Mr. Chairman, I so move. I'll, I'll second it. Mr. Moved by Mr. Burgess, second by Mr. Nizo. Uh, any other discussion? Mm. Any objection? Uh, so uh, uh, that motion passes. Uh, next, we have uh, the staff report 1213 calculating residential density on a partial parcel of land. And again, this was discussed um, to a certain extent last meeting. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And similar to what we spoke about at the last meeting, it's it's not that we think it's necessary to take action right away. It's so that we don't lose track of these things that we've already started a discussion on. We have held off on the public hearings just because we, you know, we got into the holidays and whatnot. Um, but if we want to go ahead and open up the floor and have a public hearing next month on these three items, I think that that makes sense because perhaps we could lure some of the developers back in here like we did with Mr. Aguilar. We could talk about it. Once again, I, I spoke that I did do some research and I can't find communities that do that conversion ratio. So if I've got a utility servitude, I get a half a unit per acre or a wetland, I get a you know, third of a unit per acre. But that's not to say that we couldn't talk about that. It gets a little bit more complicated, uh, you know, doing math, but um, th it is something to consider. And I, I sort of, I penciled out some things that I was thinking during that uh, research that I was doing. So I can bring that back next month and we can talk about it. But I think all three of these items, because they are interrelated get get to that thing 
And I know that Mr. Bishop spoke um, at the last meeting about what we're doing is, is in essence killing the, the nature of the PUD or SPUD by limiting the density. <clears throat> that is something we want to talk about in a public hearing because they haven't been well received, but that's not to say that they can't be a better thing. And what I'm simply saying is if the public truly believes that our zoning map is the gospel, that we have one unit, two unit, and three unit per acre parts of this parish, then the PUDs should respect that, but be given the flexibility to do different product sizes than are currently allowed by code or different uses that may not be allowed within that existing zoning category. But the density, the residential density of the base zoning is what we think that the people are wanting to hold true to. So you start to get to the conservation community idea. If they want to do 50 foot lots where it's one unit per acre, you're going to have a heck of a lot more land that's preserved in perpetual open space. Those kind of things. But the only way to do that today is with a PUD. Can, can we have a public hearing without requiring action? At that sure. Public hearing. We can just have a uh, a public hearing to discuss. I mean, your action can be well. We'll have another public hearing next month. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, some of these don't seem to be a one. You know, one discussion kind right. of issue. Mr. Chair, I, I would move that we have public hearings without required action on these three items. On these the next uh, 12, 13, 12, 14, 12, 12 15. 15. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, moved by Mr. Burgess. I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Bishop. Any discussion, questions? Any opposition? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we will see that uh, on the agenda uh, next month as well. Uh, that brings us to item 10, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Move, second. Objections? Adjourn.